Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are from Group The Crown. Whereby myself, Arif Ashraf, alongside my members, will be presenting on the Constitutional Law One presentation. For our presentation, the question that was given to us is the topic of constitutional principles relating to membership, qualification, and disqualification of members of the Parliament, and that we have to illustrate the answers with relevant laws and decided cases. To continue with the introduction of our topic, which is regarding members of the Parliament, Article 44 of the Federal Constitution stated that the members of the Parliament consist of the Yang Di Pertuan Agong, YDPA, and two majlis, which is the Houses of Parliament, to be known as the House of Senate Dewan Negara and the House of Representative to Dewan Rakyat. The House of Senate Dewan Negara shall consist of 70 elected and appointed members, with two members elected from each state across Malaysia, while 44 members are appointed by the YDPA. As for the House of Representatives, Dewan Rakyat, the Dewan Rakyat shall consist of 222 members uh, that is elected throughout Malaysia whereby the members are chosen by the people through during the general election or to be known as GE. As for the first member of the members of the parliament which is the Yang Di Pertuan Agong or the YDPA. YDPA is the supreme head of the federation as understood under Article 32 of the Federal Constitution that the first clause and the second clause explains about the power and also the place of the Yang Di Pertuan Agong and also the Raja Permaisuri Agong. While clause 3 and clause 4 explain that the Yang Di Pertuan Agong shall be elected by the Conference of Ruler for a term of five years but may at any time resign his office or may be removed by the Conference of Ruler and that the provision of part 1 and part 3 of the third schedule shall apply to the election and removal of the Yang Di Pertuan Agong. Yang Di Pertuan Agong is understood as a constitutional ruler and that he will be a symbol of unity of the country whereby whereby the current the 16th the 16th and current yang di pertuan agong is the sultan abdullah of pahang while his consort is the raja pemaisuri agong which is tunku aziza aminah maimuna iskandaria there are certain qualification to be followed by the ruler uh, for a ruler to be qualified to be elected as the YDPA as stated under Part 1 of the Third Schedule of the, of the Federal Constitution. Part 1 of the Third Schedule states that a ruler is qualified to be elected as the Yang Di Pertuan unless he is a minor B, he has notified the keeper of the ruler's seal that he does not desire to be elected or C, the conference of ruler by secret ballot resolve that he is unsuitable by reason of infirmity of mind or body for any other cause to exercise the function of Yang Di Pertuan Agong. Subse section 2, subsection 2, a resolution under this section shall not be carried unless at least five members of the conference have voted in favour of it. Based on the provision, we can understood that there are certain qualifications for a ruler to follow before he can be qualified to be elected as the YDPA. There is no specific provision in the constitution that speaks about the disqualification of the YDPA. However, Article 34 explains about the disabilities of the YDPA in exercising his power and function as the ruler of the state and that there are multiple grounds on which the YDPA shall not exercise his power, which includes the YDPA shall not exercise his power as the ruler of his state except those the head of religion of Islam and the, that the YDPA shall not hold any appointment carrying any remuneration which is remuneration about money. The YDPA also shall not actively engage in any commercial enterprise. So the commencement of Article 34 seems to limit the power of the YDPA as it shows the disability of the ruler of the Federation. However, it has to be understood that it is a step to ensure that the YDPA can fully focus on dealing with the matters arising with the Federation instead of their state and that the federal court give their view in the case of punching hot against public prosecutor. The court explained that in all of his function, the Yang Di Pertuan Agong is not a ruler within the meaning of a ruler of a constitutional state of the federation. When a ruler becomes the Yang Di Pertuan Agong, he cannot hold the same position of a ruler but he is required to appoint regent. At the conference of ruler, the regent attends as the ruler but the Yang Di Pertuan Agong is not entitled to attend as the ruler and for this reason, he does not attend to the first day where the ruler exercises the function set out within light of their discretion. 
the resignation and removal of the YDPA. Article 32, Clause 3 and 4 has stated that the Yang Dipertuan Agong YDPA may resign from his office by writing and he send address to the Conference of Ruler or be removed from office by the Conference of Ruler. And that Part 3 of the third schedule states the process of the resolution of the Yang of the Conference of Ruler to remove the YDPA from office and that it shall not be carried unless at least five members of the conference have voted in favour of it. So, the Conference of Ruler may act in their discretion in matters regarding the election and removal of office of the Yang Dipertuan Agong. Previously, the Sultan Muhammad Kelima of Kelantan had resigned from office as the 15th YDPA on 6 January 2009, whereby the Comptroller of the Royal Household, Wan Ahmad Dahlan, stated in his statement that the palace would like to inform that Seri Paduka Baginda Tuanku had resigned as the 15th Yang Dipertuan Agong effective January 6, 2019 in accordance with Article 32, Clause 3 of the Federal Constitution, which the resignation shows that the YDPA has the power to resign from the office as according to the article um, provided that he informs the conference of ruler. Now, moving on to the second part, my name is Farah Taslim and I'll be explaining about the House of Representatives. So, the second member of the Members of Parliament is the House of Representatives. It has 222 members mentioned in Article 46 of the Federal Constitution. It is also recognized as the name of Dewan Rakyat. The requirement for an individual to become a representative under the House of Representatives is that he or she cannot be less than 18 years old of age. This Age requirement has been amended in 2019 when the legislative body has passed the, amend the amendment bill, the constitution amendment bill in 2019 in conjunction with also the lowerance of voting age. Moving on to the disqualifications of the members of the House of Representatives, there are six grounds denoted under section 48 clause 1 of the federal constitution. Most of the grounds listed in this article, in this specific provision, actually related to the personal capacity of an individual, such as like the mental disability, and then the possible conflict of interest that can affect his competency as a member of parliament, and also his integrity as an abiding citizen of Malaysia. There was an issue regarding the disqualification of a representative, which is whether these grounds to bar a representative to continue his tenure are applied to a candidate of representative or only on a confirmed member of a House of Representatives. It was further answered and illustrated in the case of Fan Yu Tang and Siti Usaha, Dewan Rakyat and others, where the judge Muhammad Azmi Justice has given a statement where in that statement it was included that section 48 clause 1 is applicable to both pre-election and also post-election disqualification. It was also mentioned that any person who comes within one of the sub-clauses, which is the six rounds denoted under section 48 clause 1, will not be fit to be a candidate for membership of the Dewan Rakyat or to be an appointee of the Dewan Negara. So this also means that the disqualification stated under this provision is also applicable to be the prerequisite or requirements or qualifications for an individual to be a member of the House of Representatives. Though having dual citizenship, which provided under Article 48 Clause 1, means that it is one of the disqualification for members of representatives, but it must also be understood that it is one of the prerequisite or it is one of the qualification for an individual to be a member of representative. It means that once you are not a member of uh, once you are not a citizen of Malaysia or you do not reside permanently in Malaysia, thus you cannot be ultimately a member or a candidate of a House of Representatives. Another ground for a representative to be disqualified from his seat is based on the newly amended article in the Federal Constitution. It is called the Anti-Hopping Law. So the Anti-Hopping Law had come into effect on 5th October 2022. So this law aims to denounce the betrayal of the electorate or within the members of the parliament, which is the House of Representatives. The grounds for disqualification under the anti-hopping law is as such denoted or included in Article 49A of the Federal Constitution. The first ground is that a member of political party being elected as a representative and decide to resign from his membership of his political party. The second ground is that a member of a political party being 
elected as a representative ceased his membership from his political party. And the third ground is that a representative was elected initially not representing any political parties, however, post election decides to join a political party. In the case of Nordin bin Saleh and another, and they want Undangan Negeri Kelantan and others. So in this case, the issue revolves around the State Legislative Assembly of Kelantan, which is totally a different discussion and context than the federal government. However, the ground of the case or the basis of the case is still relevant. So the Kelantan State Legislative Assembly had enacted Article 31A, which is in regard to the disqualification of a State Legislative Assembly member due to changing of membership of a political party. And it was deemed as unconstitutional uh, in regards to Article 10, Clause 1, Para C of the Federal Constitution. So this is because the this is because only Parliament can enact laws pertaining to the fundamental rights of a citizen guaranteed under Article 10, Clause 1, uh, Para C in the Federal Constitution. Hence, why this case is relevant is because it has put forward and illustrate how the issue of changing political parties had been a long-standing issue in the, in the Malaysia political areas and attempts actually had been made to combat the issue. So fortunately, the current legislative body had decided to come forward and put this issue of changing political parties to halt by amending the laws and adding the Article 49A as another ground of disqualification for a member of House of Representatives. The last thing that will be discussed under the House of Representatives is that the membership of the members in House of Representatives. Provided under Article 55, Clause 3, it is stated that Parliament shall continue for the period of five years from the date of its first meeting and then shall be dissolved unless there is an earlier dissolvement. So it is clear that the membership of every representative under the House of Representatives will be for five years unless there is a special circumstances that, in, that will result to the Parliament having an early dissolvement. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ahmad Amzar. So now I would like to move on to the third members of Parliament which is the House of Senate. So the House of Senate is uh, mainly known as Dewan Negara. Uh, in total, there are 70 seats that are available in the House of Senate by virtue of Article 45. But in our current government, there are only 46 seats that are occupied with 24 vacant seats that are yet to be fulfilled. So moving on to the qualification of a person to be appointed in the House of Senate, as uh, by virtue of such, uh, Article 47, a person who is appointed to become a senator needs to attain the age of at least 30 years old to be appointed into the House of Senate. Hence, uh, there are also other, uh, other requirements such as uh, they need to become a citizen of Malaysia and reside in Malaysia, and the candidate for senator can, cannot suffer any disabilities and disqualification under Article 48. So moving on to the disqualification of the House of Senate, it is similar with the House of Representatives, uh, but uh, for the disqualification in the House of Senate, it does not affect regarding political parties. So uh, it's uh, similar with uh, the House of Representatives, as in uh, the person cannot be unsound of mind, cannot be declared bankrupt, cannot hold an office of profit, cannot be convicted for an offence, uh, with an imprisonment not less than one year or a fine not less than 2000 and have received a free pardon. While there is an additional ground for representative to be terminated from his seat by changing political parties, there is no basis for changing political parties for senators. So moving on to the membership of uh, the House of Senate. The membership of representative is meant by how long the representative will hold its position. So for the House of Senate, according to Article 45, Clause 3, which explains that the members of the House of Senate shall be in office for a term of three years and can only be re-elected once. This means that uh, the members in the House of Senate can only be a senator for two terms only. So uh, additionally, uh, in Clause 4, the Parliament can increase and decrease the number of seats inside the House of Senate depending on the ruling government so that they could uh, fulfill their uh, requirements inside the House of Senate. 
So that will be all for uh, the membership qualification and disqualification of the House of Senate. So to conclude our discussion on the members of parliament, hence there are three members of parliament, namely the first one is the head of state, which is Yang Dipertuan Agong. Secondly, the House of Representatives, which is the Dewan Rakyat. And last, it is the House of Senate, which is the Dewan Negara. Representatives are to be elected by the people of the country in the general election, while the senators are appointed by the YDPA. Though the qualification and disqualification of both houses of representatives and House of Senate are the same, their powers in making laws for the country is a bit distinguished from the other. There is an, an amended ground of disqualification for representatives to safeguard both the interests of the government and the people who are elected as the representatives. Hence, this is our discussion of the members of parliament. Thank you and have a nice day.